Hey everyone, Pastor George here with Mailbag Fridays, and today we have a question about catechisms from Art. And Art's asked this question before, uh, but I, you know, but I, and I answered it in the chat, but maybe he forgot, <laughs> or maybe I wasn't clear enough. So I will try and condense this, and then just uh, if anyone ever asks you this question, you can just send them this video because I'm going to try and be as specific in this video as I possibly uh, can be. So. Um, Art asked, uh, he asked, like, what's with all these questions between the Heidelberg, uh, for those who don't know, we're going through the Heidelberg Catechism in our church, uh, Sunday worships. So we're, we're doing kind of a related question from the Heidelberg Catechism to whatever I happen to be talking about, or I try to relate it sometimes not so successful, but anyway, what's with all these questions between Heidelberg's, uh, million questions and now catechism uh, questions there. He's referring to the Westminster, which we're doing here on Wednesdays, which you should totally check out. Um, now, catechism questions, which uh, when I was a kid, only Roman Catholic kids had catechism, and they left school early to go to catechism while everyone else had to stay in school. Uh, and I, Art here brings out a really good thing, um, unknowingly. Like, there has been this recent kind of idea, and by recent, I mean in the last, like, 50, 60 years uh, in the Presbyterian church and mainline Protestant churches, probably longer than that, probably like 80 years, honestly, um, uh, where catechism is something that is for Catholics, uh, that it's something Catholics go to. And that's because they have the catechism class, right? And because we didn't have catechism classes, it ended up becoming associated with uh, Catholic stuff. But uh, as I've tried to point out before, it was actually very common uh, from the 19... 30s, sometimes into the 40s, previously, and we're going back to like the 1500s, for Protestants uh, to do catechism. And even before that, the Latin church, not Catholics, the Latin church, there's a difference, um, uh, would do catechism before that, right? And this goes all the way back to the uh, early church. Um, even Paul in his letters seems to have had some sort of, of teaching method where he would put some things before others, right? He would he, he, he uh, talks about in one of his letters how we have passed on to you the things that were passed on to us, right? There's these teachings, and that's what catechism is all about. It's about making sure people understand our basic thoughts um, about these things. So uh, the early reformers thought that, wow, you know, we have to kind of repair a lot of the damage that's been done um, by people not being able to engage the Word of God regularly. And a good way to do that is through teaching them, not only teaching them through the Bible, but giving them answers to questions that are going to be asked. And so uh, it ended up becoming a big part of all Protestant theory and, and theology, right? Uh, it, it was basically the only way that Sunday school was done in uh, Reformed churches up until, I mean, this last century. Uh, so it's funny, but you wouldn't have had kids, you know, in the 1800s uh, drawing little Noah's arcs or whatever, or making macaroni pictures, they would have been sitting there memorizing catechisms, uh, either led by the pastor or led by someone else. So that was a big part of the faith. Um, and this is also true of Lutherans. It's less true of Methodists because they don't have any of these things. And it's not true of Baptists and others, although they're trying to do it now, um, funnily enough. So it, the important thing to know about this is that we have these things for a purpose, express purpose of teaching, uh, right? The, the teaching our interpretation of scripture. Um, and so just to, again, point out that these aren't Catholic, right? Is I have a question and the question is from the 80, it's the 80th question in Heidelberg Catechism. And I almost used it one church service when we were doing communion, but I decided not to because it's uh, against the Catholic understanding of the um, uh, Lord's Supper, and I don't want anyone to turn into a virulent anti-Catholic uh, without, you know, uh, like really ever, because that's not very loving, but without understanding their full argument here. Uh, but now I realize that I probably should include this because it would help head people off of thinking catechisms are Catholic. Um, the catechisms we use come from early reformers. So if you think that they're Catholic, then you have to think that like Ulrich Zwingli and John Calvin and John Knox are Catholic, which they would <laughs> probably uh, be very offended <laughs> if you called them that. Uh, so here's the 80th question from the Heidelberg Catechism. 
And the question is, what's the, what difference is there between the Lord's Supper and the Papal Mass? The answer, the Lord's Supper testifies to us first that we have complete forgiveness for all our sins through the one sacrifice of Jesus Christ, which he himself accomplished on the cross once for all. And second, that through the Holy Spirit, we are grafted into Christ, who with his true body is now in heaven at the right hand of the Father. And this is where he wants to be worshipped. But the Mass teaches us, first, that the living and the dead do not have forgiveness of sins through the suffering of Christ, unless he is still offered for them daily by the priests. And second, that Christ is bodily present in the form of bread and wine, and there is to be worshipped. Therefore, the Mass is basically nothing but a denial of the one sacrifice and suffering of Jesus Christ and an accursed idolatry. All right? So... It just by matter of fact, <laughs> the Heidelberg Catechism can't be Catholic because it calls the Mass an idolatry, right? Uh, if you just think this idea of teaching people to memorize things is Catholic, well then I guess all education is Catholic because at some level we have to get people to memorize basic things, right? So, so the point is, is that these serve as tools to help ground people, right? Get them to ask basic questions. Uh, and give them answers to those basic questions. For instance, if you knew this answer and someone asked you, well, what's the difference between the mass and what your church does? Or if you wanted to explain to someone what's the difference between the Catholic mass and what we believe, right? You, ha you have an answer here. Um, and I'm not even, I, I encourage, you know, everyone to memorize all these things, but I can't memorize all these things. So, you know, I understand that it, it can be difficult to do that and it may seem weird, but even if you familiarize yourself with these things and just kind of get the basic thrust of each question, it's immensely helpful. Um, and you might as well get used to catechism because it's going to become a larger part of our education at CPC as long as I'm here. So if you want to get rid of catechisms, you have to get rid of me. But I expect a big severance check. <laughs> so either way, uh, I hope this has been, uh, been helpful for you guys. I will see you on Sunday if you're coming for church, and I'll see you Monday. Uh, where we'll continue with uh, me Monday. So I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend and stay safe.